Well, we have our usual sports slot on a Friday morning, partly business, partly sport. And uh, how does one go about becoming a professional golfer? Well, I suppose the first step is to become a good golfer, and then you can think about where you go from there. Uh, Dale Hayes and Ivana Fikalbi are with us in studio, and in our Cape Town studio is Brendan uh, Barrett. Dale, let me start with you. And, I, you know, you watch the Ryder Cup, as we did over the weekend, and you watch those wonderful majors, especially the Masters. It's just so beautiful, and the life of a professional golfer looks wonderful. But it's tough out there, and uh, there's that wonderful book called uh, A Good Walk Spoiled by John Feinstein. And he talks about how tough it is for the guys really out of the top 20. And the slam dunk day, the Friday of a tournament when you, the cut means that half the guys go home. Slam dunk is you putting your, your clubs in the boot <laughs> and you're not taking part. You've been a professional golfer for a very long time, and it, but it's a tough life. It beats a hell out of working. So let's start there, okay? Not that I would know because I've never had a real job, but... Um, it is a very tough life, you know, unlike I think most other sports where you start off by getting money, no matter whether you win or lose. Uh, um, although a golf professional, if you've, made, if you've made it, you've done well, you would have endorsements. But in terms of prize money, you start off every tournament and if you miss the cut, you don't get a penny. Mm. So it is a tough life. And, you know, we see all these guys out there winning loads and loads of money. And uh, you don't sometimes realize that they've, they've been practicing for 30 years to get to that point. Mm. You know, they've been practicing for 20 years to get to that point, or certainly for a very long time. Somebody like Rory McIlroy started playing golf, I think, when he was three or four years old. So it's taken a long time to get there, and it's taken a lot of work to get there. And it takes a lot of work to stay there. Mm. And uh, so it is a tough life. Traveling, being away from your family, being away from your children, being away from your friends um, is not easy. Mm. Ivana, perhaps let's bring you into the conversation here. For somebody like me who does not follow golf, I understand you're the CEO of the PGA. When I think about the PGA, I think about Tiger Woods. I'm not sure. I think I'm on the right track. Exactly what is it that you do? You put events together, and one would think that is a lot of hard work. Okay, I think the, the, the clear difference is there are two professional bodies. There's the Sunshine Tour, mm -hmm. and that's uh, managed by Selwyn Nathan and, and Grant Wilson. They run the events. The PGA of South Africa, we look after the professional who works in the golf industry. So your golf coach, your golf director, your club manager, th those sort of things. So we as the PGA uh, have a training program for people to go through to learn the golf industry, anything from coaching juniors to coaching your elite player to then uh, managing golf clubs. And we have, play we have members who work in every different aspect of the game from reps, selling golf equipment to club fitters uh, to your best golf coaches. Yep. Let's bring in Brendan Barrett, who's the editor of Complete Golf uh, from Cape Town. Brendan, my impression is driving around Johannesburg, there are a couple of courses that are offering you breakfast plus your round. Uh, it looks as if these clubs are not at operating at capacity. Golf is expensive. Uh, so I would say course for course, South Africa's probably got the best golf courses in the world. Combine that with our weather, uh, it really is amazing. And yet, is golf growing? Is it, uh, is it a boom sport? Yeah, I mean, David, it's hard to, hard to argue with that, that we've got, uh, we've got incredible courses, we've got incredible weather. But uh, I think we are seeing a bit of a decline at the moment with golf. Uh, it's one of the challenges we're facing is to get more people to be interested in the game and to get out onto the courses and, and, and to play a bit more often. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's 100% uh, right by you. Yeah, Dale, uh, becoming a golfer, becoming a professional golfer, and I've known a lot of amateur golfers who are really very good. And as we know, the margin for error in golf is so, so tiny. You could have three rounds of 64, and you get one bad hole on the fourth round, and that's it. You're gone. Now, all these very good amateur golfers, how easy is it for them to say, OK, I'm putting my hand up, I'm going to try it? Well, I, I want to give an example of the difference. Uh, my father was a professional golfer. And my father always used to say to somebody who thought he was going to turn professional, if you can't average 66 or 67 every time you play on your home golf course, don't even consider it. Because add two shots for nerves, add two shots for the fact that you don't know the golf course and your score's up to 70 already. Mm -hmm. And Tiger Woods and all these guys are shooting in the 60s every time they play mm -hmm. on any golf course. So that kind of gives you an idea of how good you need to be. You need to be able to shoot 66 or 67 on your home course every time you play. Another example is the great old teacher, Harvey Pennick. Somebody came to him and said, uh, Mr. Pennick, I'm nearly 50 years old. I want to go on the senior tour. I've made loads of cash, and I want to go play on the senior tour, and I'm a good golfer. Harvey Pennick said, I want you to go to the driving range. There's a guy on the driving range right now who's made loads of money. 
he's quite a good golfer and he's also practicing to go on the senior tour. The guy came back five minutes later, he said, I get your point. The person on the practice team was Tom Kite. This guy said, I get your point, but I'd still like a golf lesson from you. <laughs> it's, they ha you have no idea how good you have to be. You know, and I think to go to like the Nedbank Golf Challenge, to go to the South African Open and watch these guys play and practice, mm -hmm. you, get, you can get some sort of a concept of just how good you, you have to be. You know, unfortunately you have dads who uh, kind of see, um, they, they see loads of money out there for their kids. Fond fathers. Yeah, and uh, you know, they, they really have no idea how good you have to be. How, how many, uh, Ivan, uh, how many golfers are there? How many professionals are there in South Africa? How many of them make a good to, to pretty good living? Well, we've got 570 members who work in the industry. I think the tour must have about 200 players. And I would say 50 of those make a decent living, yeah, and about 10 make a decent living worldwide. Mm. Um, well, some, hang on, some, some, some make a very, very good living, like Ernie, for example, who's mm. making loads of cash. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a very difficult industry to, uh, you know, to play in tournaments and, and compete at the highest level. It takes a big step up from amateur golf to professional golf, like Dale was saying. Yeah. And it's not a, not a, not, you're not going to make a lot of money out of it unless you're really, really a good player. Mm. So, Ivana, are we talking about guys that are really, really good? So if I'm thinking about starting at where I assume it's going to be amateur golf, what is it that I need to do? And how much is it going to cost me? Well, it varies. So if you, if, if you want to get into golf, there's a lot of golf clubs that offer, uh, uh, they call them bunny clinics for, for ladies to get used to the game. Generally, they introduce you to current ladies who play the game. Or men. Or men. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> well, an issue I want to raise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, if you want to start the game, it's best to, to go have a to go take some lessons. You can take that either in the form of an individual lesson, you can go to the club near, nearest to you, find the PGA professional there. Uh, you can either have one-off lessons or you can have a bunch of lessons, but it's, it's probably best to do it in a group of people. Yeah. You can take group lessons and the pro will, will get you started from the basics to the full swing, to learning the game, explaining etiquette, the rules of the game, and eventually they'll take you out onto the golf course as well as, as a playing lesson. And then there's an introduction to the golf club, you know, getting to know members, playing the game, getting a handicap. So it's a, it's a progression. It takes a while to so do it. So average cost for that, if I'm, if I'm thinking I want to start getting my lessons, I want to get my kit together, how much should I be budgeting for? You always hear golf is an expensive sport. So Well, I think the, the change that's happening now is I think a lot of golf professionals are offering where you can take a bunch of lessons without having the equipment to start off with because the equipment is the big fee. So I think a, a full starting pack, I think Dale would know better, it was probably about 10, in excess of 10,000 Rand for all your equipment, your shoes and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lesson package of 10 lessons was probably 1,500 Rand, I would imagine. Group lessons slightly cheaper. And then uh, getting into, you know, joining a golf club, minimum five, six thousand rand annual annual fee, and then your green fees are anywhere between a hundred and two hundred rand as a member of a golf club. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Brendan, bringing you in there, um, one thinks of making it easier, as you said, uh, as we've said here, and. Uh, the golfers generally, everyone's looking for that little secret, that little extra something that will enable them to, to take, make, I think it was Harvey Pennick who said the secret of golf is four shots into three or five shots into four, I forget. So, I mean, the margin for error again. You run the magazine. Everyone's looking for that little secret. Uh, in terms of uh, money that's in the game, supporting magazines like yours, sponsorships and so on, we know the big tours are sponsored, lots of money there. How easy is it to get money in to develop players who don't have the money to get in but might have the talent? And we're talking particularly previously disadvantaged people. Well, yeah, I think the development board does a very, very good job. Um, and uh, yeah, I, that is the challenge we have is that, you know, a lot of the clubs will put money, to, money together and they'll have development courses and the guys will come and they'll play. But, one of the problems we have is once they reach 18, they're outside, they're, they're, they fall outside the development board or the foundations that they're in, and then where do they go? They don't have the money to join the clubs or whatever. So we have got a couple of, of foundations where the guys can, can uh, sort of prepare to turn professional, but um, yeah, it is one of the challenges we face. Mm. Dale, is it true that when people are in the boardroom, they talk golf, and when they're on the golf course, they or business, uh, is this perhaps one of the other motivators to take up golf? It certainly is. It's a, it's a, it's a fantastic way to spend time with people. You know, golf is, uh, we call it a sport, but it's actually a social event for amateur golfers. And golf is about amateur golf. Let's never forget that. There are 50 million people around the world that play golf. 
50 million. It's the most played sport in the world for adults. Okay, yeah. And the, the great thing about golf is that you spend four, four and a half, five hours with, with people talking. You hit shots for two minutes. For four and a half hours you talk. So there's no better place to do business. And it's a fact, a lot of business is done on the golf course. And you know, uh, uh, Brenda there is talking about the Golf Development Board. Thank goodness the Golf Development Board is supported by Johan Rupert. He really looks after, he really looks after golf in a wonderful way. He loves the game of golf and supports it incredibly well. And uh, you know, getting back to the lessons and starting the game of golf, you know, it doesn't have to be that expensive. Mm. You know, you don't, as as Ivana said, you don't have to buy golf clubs. You can go for lessons without having to buy all the golf clubs, without having to spend the ten thousand rand. And you can go and have a few lessons and get started and see if you like the game. Mm. And uh, you know, any time you'd like a lesson, as long as you don't tell my wife. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to spend time on the on the golf course golfers, with you. Golfers say that a lot. <laughs> golfers say that a lot, as long as you don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, a place that is very good at this is the Vodaf Vodaf Voda Vodacom world of golf, where you go, you can spend not a lot of money and have a meal and try the game out. Little uh, short course, uh, there's a driving range, there are pros there that will help you. I think if you spend a few hours there, you get a feel of whether you want to try it more. But what I wanted to ask you also is, it struck me from the tennis world in particular, there are four majors in tennis. The South African Open Tennis used to be the fifth major in world tennis, the Grand Slam tournament. They sold it. They got some money for it. The South African Open Golf used to have that kind of status. Now, in my mind, it doesn't, it's still very important. It doesn't have that status anymore, perhaps because the Nedbank Challenge, the Nedbank Million Dollars was called, perhaps that took the limelight. So is our circuit, we've got great courses, we've got some great golfers. I mean, again, man for man, woman for woman, we've got more good golfers than most countries in the world. Yet is our tour living up to that? Uh, I'd struggle to answer that question. Dale may have a better, a better I'd idea there, I think. You know, I think our, you know, our tour is terrific. We had more co-sanctioned events um, in South it's Africa like than any other country. Uh, linked. Yes, and we had more than any other country in the world. And yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. But is it sustainable? That is a big question. There's a big question. So what's there. the problem? You know, I, I think a lot of our tournaments are backed by uh, uh, provinces and by cities and stuff like that. You know, Joburg Open, the Twani Open, etc. Um, whether they in there for the long haul, uh, we need to wait and see. I would like to see some of our tournaments merge together. I was just talking to Ivano about it. I'd like to see some of our tournaments merge together, make them bigger, have fewer of the really big tournaments that are there to attract international players to come to South Africa, and then have many more tournaments for our local players. So they have many more tournaments where they offer a million rand prize money that our local players can go down to, to uh, uh, Petersburg or Durban or Peter Maritzburg, wherever it might be, and go and play in a tournament. And then just only have three or four really big tournaments like the Nedbank. Mm. Have the Nedbank, the South African Open, the Joburg Open, whichever four they choose. The Nelson Mandela, what a name, you know, for a golf tournament. But merge the Nelson Mandela with another tournament to ensure that it's going to be sustainable. That's what I'd like to see happen. Brendan, last word from you there. Uh, the future of golf. I mean, you've got to have your finger on the pulse here because uh, you're, you have readers and you've got to sell the magazine and keep in touch with them. Are we going to get back to a growing sport or is there just not the resource in South Africa? I think there's no reason why we shouldn't. Um, I think golf's going through a very exciting phase at the moment. You've just got to look at someone like Rory McIlroy breaking through. Um, you look at some of the, the top South African players coming through and I think once you see once you see these guys out there and how much fun they're having and how much enjoyment it is, I think it inspires more people to want to play golf. So um, we do, uh, as I said earlier, we do have the challenge of trying to get more people onto the golf course and, and uh, trying to make golf a little easier and trying to make it a little less expensive um, and, and perhaps less time consuming. You know, people want to spend less time, they've got less time these days, they don't want to spend half a day on the weekend, they'd rather spend it with their families. But uh, I think we've got everything in place and, you know, we, we're all working together to try and make sure that we can get more people to play golf. Yeah, I think time is an issue. It's a bit like the long lunch that you used to have. People say, I haven't got time for the long lunch. I haven't got time uh, to play golf. Well, thanks to professional golfer Dale Hayes, Ivana Fikalbi, who's CEO of the PGA in South Africa, and Brendan Barrett. Uh, it's, he's the editor of Complete Golf. And I think, uh, seeing I'm out of here at 10, I think yeah, I might just get in a few holes before lunch. <laughs>